Hello adventurers, as you can see, I'm here at Hyden. And what am I doing here at Hyden? Well, I came out and stayed at our farm, which is just north of here, but I'm actually on the way to Point Culver and the Baxter Cliffs fishing. Going to head out the Hyden Norseman Road to Norseman, then out to Balladonia, and then in uh, to that area from the north. We have a fair way to go, but um, yeah, this is the sort of starting point. So I thought I would uh, just quickly come past Wave Rock, which I haven't been to for, I don't know, maybe a year or so. Um, having a farm close, obviously visited here quite a bit and uh, just have a quick look and then a uh, bit of fresh air and then hop in the car for the trip to the Baxter Cliffs, towing the bike and all the fishing gear and everything uh, out there and setting up camp and using the bikes to fish. So, all right, let's uh, walk that way to Hippo's Yawn and then back to the car. So here in Hyden and met up with the rest of the guys. So here's Mark's rig, his fishing rig on that trailer, and his Colorado, and then this rig with the side by side. And I'll have a look at this rig later, but this runs on fish and chip oil and uh, taking this into Culver. So she's an old uh, 70 running on fish and chip oil. Um, I think I think she's a slow and steady machine. I think all the oil stuff's in the back of here, so we'll take a look one one time when we're in there. But this is brand new. Hasn't been used. We have Mark in front. Chris behind in his fish and chip powered Land Cruiser and I'll be in the middle and uh, I've got to change it to 33 on the radio and we're uh, heading out of Hyden on the Hyden Norseman Road. Norseman will be the next stop and then Palladonia. So anyone that's been out here, this area probably has done the Holland track and here is the start of it here, or well, the start of the main part of it at least, it does actually go over there as well but this is the main part of it here. So there's a bit of a sign over there, that's the road you can see up there going to Norseman and here is the start of the Holland track. Uh, HT, the little signs that you follow that you see on the track and here is a uh, list of things that are on this track. And it looks like there's been a fire go through here. The start of it's quite sandy. Here it's hard, but just in there it's quite sandy. But uh, anyone that's into fall driving and exploring has probably uh, seen this track. And there's a plaque over here that explains um, a bit about Holland himself and how they cut the track and a parking area to get set up. So we're going to pull in at Lake Johnson and um, stretch the legs and uh, maybe get a bite to eat or something out of the fridge and check everything over. It's only just up here. Um, we sort of go up and around it between two large lakes, uh, two salt lakes. So probably only a few kilometres away.
At Norseman, just filled up with fuel. There's a fuel station just heading to Baladonia. Just thought I'd check out the uh, trailer. So the bike's getting all dusty due to the uh, silicon and the stuff I put on it to stop it getting uh, affected by the salt. You can see the stones that flick up off the gravel and they hit hit the uh, mesh and the mesh, even on where it touches the bike, it's got quite a, um, like a cushioning effect and it doesn't harm the bike. <clears throat> Fuel jerry still look good. Swag on the back just for room. Hubs are still nice and cool. Everything's still tight. All looks good. So Chris is going to fill up his fill up his truck with fish and chip oil. You fi you filtered out all the chips. Nah, straight in there. No, all the see. chips. <laughs> so vegetable oil is what goes in here. Straight unrefined vegetable oil. She's pretty thick. It's like fish and chip oil. It's a good price. Is that rice bran or Yeah. Alrighty, we're off again. We're probably going to head to Baladonia fuel up and because it's still pretty early, we'll probably uh, go in and camp on the track. Won't get all the way to the coast, but somewhere on the track. Um, rather than uh, waste the rest of the day. down the road now this is Baladonia um, so we're probably going to just top up with fuel because we won't see fuel for a long time um, and then uh, keep on heading out and camp in the bush um, so this is probably the last of the civilization so we'll pop in here and uh, top up with fuel Only here there's a little museum it's mainly around Skylab when Skylab crashed from space out in these parts so a little bit of history about it here so these little parts of little parts of it there's a wiring loom some insulation I don't know if this is a prop or I imagine that's a prop but yeah a little museum in here all about it And some old uh, farming gear. And this little tiny museum. Loaded up with ice for the fishing eskies and um, we'll keep on heading out. Alrighty, we are off and running. Out to the turn off all right we uh, find a camp spot and then um, set up for the night and uh, probably get a Weber out and cook something up I think the eastern side of the 90 mile straights down here too I might stop and get a, a photo just for those that aren't in Australia, this is quite common in Australia. Here on this road is also uh, right here is an airstrip where they land the flying doctor. There's a sign. I'll just flip the camera around. That sign shows that there's an airstrip, and you'll see it here. They've just cleared the cleared the sides of the roads and put the piano keys on.
and they just land the plane here. If something happens out here and they need to get to somebody, they just land the plane uh, right here and just block off the road uh, on each end. So here is the mandatory photo opportunity at the sign that states it's the longest piece of road. So I uh, just stopped and got a quick photo. Alrighty, we're coming up to the turn off. So it's uh, only a couple of k's here. And when you head south, this last little bit is only, this is the actual off road part. It's uh, only 70 odd k's, I think, but it'll take about five hours um, to get in there because it's really slow and a lot of rocks and you got to get down to scarp and all that sort of thing. So last 70 k's is the uh, slowest part of the whole trip. Just at the turn off now. Uh, Mark's at the turn off and uh, we're going to find a place to camp in here. so we'll just uh, drop the tyre pressures in here and then uh, keep on going. Alright, everything's down, trailer's down. They're not bagging out that much, so they're only at 20. A bit loaded up on the back, so 28 and uh, about 28 in the front. We'll see how that goes. And then uh, if it needs any more, we'll uh, I'll do it when we uh, camp. So, all right, I'd like to go. Down this fence line for a start. Just walking back down the track. Mark behind me's got a uh, flat, flat on his rear. So we'll uh, go take a look. Hopefully, it's just a plug job. Not a sidewall or something like that. So here's the flat. Can't see anything obvious, but um, we'll have to uh, see if we can get a bit of air in and find it, find the hole. So there's the uh, there's the puncture. A couple of plugs, another sidewall in the Toyo. That's a fourth yeah, sidewall yeah. on these Toyo open countries. I uh, probably wouldn't get these <laughs> for four-wheel driving. They're just not tough enough. Well, that should get us in and out anyway walk back up there and uh, keep going find a campsite before that sun goes down let's get going all right packed up and uh, about to head off um, heading to the coast, so everything's uh, repacked up exactly as it was. Just got to pack the last my jet ball away from a coffee, and we're on our way. All right, we're off. Should take about another four hours or so to get in there, so we should be in there in plenty of time for a fish this afternoon. I imagine these guys who are keen fishermen will be straight into it. Um, just a slow rocky track a little bit further down the road uh, probably oh, three quarters of an hour to or so down the road still got a fair way to go I uh, haven't hit the rocks yet so that's uh, still all to come but uh, yeah it's a long trip in and but everything's going well so far So we're going through the swamp now. It's uh, yeah, it's pretty dry, so it's uh, pretty easy. Definitely into the rocks now. Um, yeah, quite rocky and quite tight. Um, this is the slow bit, and there should be a couple of roads that fork off down here to various parts of the cliffs. But it's um, yeah, it's just pretty slow going now. Um, only the the gaps between the rocks are getting less and less. She's uh, snapped off. What's in here? Oh, there's a whole bunch of stuff in here.
need to, need to build them uh, strong enough. Hopefully, mine's all right. This looks like the other half of that trailer. Looks like a bit of a camper trailer. Must be the back of it, the front must be this one. Yeah, snapped it off here. Right at the welds. That's why you don't weld across a drawbar like that. You never weld across it. Full of sand. Oh, well, it's got a bit sandier now, so I think there's still a bit more rock, but there's a bit of a sandy patch um, to get get through, and then uh, we'll be uh, heading down the scarp. Alrighty, we're nearly at the top of the scarp, so just going through these dunes um, to get there. Not far away, only minutes. So this is how you get down the scarp because it's pretty steep. They've um, someone's come and pinned in conveyor belt all the way to the bottom. So that's what we uh, get to drive down, and this gives you a heap of grip. It's pinned all the way down to basically where you can see down there where the ocean is. tackle these belts. down, just got it in low first, using the engine braking. Okay, so this is like the wasteland, limestone wasteland of Point Culver. I think there's actually another car over here, so someone else must be in here, which is unusual. Last time we came here, there was nobody. Right, this is where we went, uh, this is where we camped last time, I think. So we'll uh, do the same. All right, we'll get... Uh, get the bike off at least and then um, and then uh, get all the camping gear off all right let's get everything dumped off
trailer to platform and slowly getting the campsite set up. Get some tables and stuff out and then we'll be done. I've got one, two, three solar panels. They're all 120s. And then I've also brought the generator because if we catch a lot of fish we have to run freezers on flat out and um, it's just back up um, so I had it so I brought it but uh, I found that uh, solar panel actually on the road and I put it on the community website and no one's taken it for months so I thought I'd bring it out but it's actually a good quality one um, this one is a medium to low quality one and this one's a high quality fixed panel set so Oh, probably seven on the Red Arc 7 amps each um, they'll punch in so uh, should keep that battery well and truly charged um, during the day and it easily gets through the night um, only uses about 20% of its power even with both the fridges on and this little angle here is like having two fridges because it uses about five to seven amps it's quite power hungry but the lithium that I put in easily does it and then got a bunch of fuel for the bikes there's some more on the trailer over there um, and for the generator all right pretty well set up nearly uh nearly beer o'clock chris getting his uh side by side organized it's new until it catches a big fish then it's christened and then the uh, Polaris is right over here. It's Mark's set up and this is the uh, My Yellow Beast. A bit dusty from the trip in and all the silicon and stuff you stick all over them. But there's the camp set up. You going, you going that way? Yeah. Feels much better already. fishing first time we'll see what we've forgotten I got these glasses from Bunnings they're really cheap but they really good for the wind they're just safety glasses Spot now looking for a good gutter. trip because it gets pretty cold down here and this keeps you a bit drier and you can wear clothes underneath so all right let's get uh, set up all right geared up line in the water and a uh, and a bush chook name your export so hopefully we can get a fish and a decent sized one just using some mullet for bait that I bought whole and filleted. That's my filleting board set up. And it's a, uh, a nice day. Just a bit of a breeze. Alright, first little baby mulloway. Didn't take long. We'll go and have a look at him. Little school mulloway. 
Alright, I'll get these hooks out. Yeah. Oh, I've always um, found found them here in um, November. They're good ones too down here. Beauties. So we've caught a few Taylor giant skippy which we never kept but I might put a picture of it up. Um, it was a huge one and then in the ice box we have a couple of Mulloway. And I'll just uh, show you those. So not huge. Um, what would they be? Uh, 75 centimeters something like that so uh, yeah just good eating size all right well, get back to I love it in here eh Sick. all righty back to it Heading out again um, in the morning. Last night we did really well, got a couple of Mulloway, bronzy, big skippy, flathead, all sorts. So uh, heading out again, just getting the bikes set up. Um, it's a beautiful morning, not a breath of wind at the moment, and uh, ready to uh, hit the beach. Got to get set up here at the home gutter and um, Chris has gone all the way up there because he wants to take his bike for a spin but we're just going to sit right here and uh, see if we can pull in a couple more good fish. So uh, let's get on with it. Here you need the rubber hammer, the sand's really fine and the spike won't stay up unless you bang it in. You can see over here it's actually getting quite dark, so even though it doesn't look like it's going to rain, you never know. So we just went a bit further down the beach, it got a bit weedy where we were, we only had a couple of casts. This is a lot cleaner, this is close to where we were last night, and um, yeah, really good gutter. and. Uh, Hopefully, hopefully we get onto something. A little bit of a, what would that be, a south easterly. Just wafting, you can just see the uh, the mist down there. Nice bit of mullet. to a new spot. No fish there. I think gear helps. So we just follow the just keep finding gutters until we find the fish basically. There's Hundred kilometres of gutters or so here. Mark's got something. I don't know if it's big or not. He's yelling out a lot, so we'll go check it out. He got bitten off. Big shark. 
ravaged. Looks like we'll be changing over to wire, I suspect. Another Malala, just another school size. Just going right up in that little drop off there. School size. Nice one. Oh, that's not a bad one. I think that's Chris's second one today. Second one this morning. So it'll uh, go well in the freezer. I might go and check my bait. So we just moved down a little bit further and then uh, one last fish and we'll clean the fish we've got. So we've got a pretty big uh, esky full. So in here there's a few mulloway, some flathead, and some other bits and pieces. And in the other one I think there's a bronzy and a mulloway or two in that uh, esky. So not a bad effort for a couple of days. Nearly processed all the fish, I've got some in here. There's some in there and some in here and Mark's just finalising the last of it. This is the bronzy. All the fish is processed and in the eskies we're heading back now to camp, we'll uh, make a coffee, have something to eat, cook up a bit of fish for lunch and get in the freezer and get the freezers uh, going flat out to get that chill down and then uh, get ready for the afternoon sesh. So a um, little bit of weather coming in so we've got to get a couple of good days in, we might have to uh, sit a couple of bad ones out. Alrighty, let's go. There you go, there's the uh, processed fish. Not bad haul for a uh, couple of days, a couple of sessions. Now to uh, pack it in all the freezers, get the jenny going and get it chilled down. 